all right let's open the the file which we designed earlier mp3 player design now we need to name all the controls let us check the basic controls which are the play pause stop buttons we just need to have the instance names for them to start working with them i'm just checking the instance names of the controls let's save the file and we just need to create that one base class for this and i'm naming this as in that sound object and let us save the action script file as sound object we are supposed to save fla as well as uh, action script file both in same folder and now we just need to create one sound object using that sound class which is going to help us to load that mp3 songs from external folder here in this case that instance name of that my sound object is my song and we do require one sound channel sound channel is another class that which is going to help us to control that mp3 song which we are going to load it from external folder so here in this case that the instance name of that my channel is my channel and we just required that one variable song index because if we want to have that next and previous song buttons that we are supposed to have that one variable to increase and decrease that index value of the array and here is the array the array name is songs that which is going to help us to define that all the song names here the list of songs will be defined inside that array the instance name of that array is songs and now let's get into the public function which is by default we are supposed to initialize the array we just uh, defined the array there and we are supposed to initialize that array here in this public public function uh, songs equal to that we are supposed to define that all the song names inside that array i have already uh, mentioned that all the song names in notepad i'm just copying all the file names from notepad and i just specified inside this array now that my songs array is ready and we are supposed to load mp3 song into this my sound object which is my song my song dot load load is a method which will help us to load that external mp3 file and we are supposed to send a url request with the file name let us load that file name let us read the file name from the songs array songs of song index as we discussed that song index is a variable the value of that song index is by default zero and this is going to help us to load the first value of the songs array and we are supposed to apply that play method that which is going to help us to play that song as soon as it loaded into the sound object of course that we are supposed to add the complete path to load the external mp3 file and we are supposed to add the extension to it since we have only the name in songs array that we are supposed to add that prefix and suffix which is that folder name as well as that extension let's save the file and test it all right song is playing now all right the moment when we, when we test the file it is started automatically but we don't want to start that song as soon as we say test that it is supposed to start the moment when i click on the play button so we are supposed to create the controls for this uh, song let us take 
couple of buttons help to create that start and stop methods. We are already having the buttons on my screen. So we just check the instance names of that each button, uh, which is supposed to be that, uh, which is which is play button, pass button, as well as the stop button. Let's go with that a basic control, that play button, and the another basic control is that stop button. Let us say that play song BTN, that add event listener, let's go with the default event which is click and my song name is that play song. Now the another uh, button stop BTN, stop song BTN and let's add an, uh, another event listener to, uh, to this button and let's go with that as it is uh, default uh, event click and the function name is stop song. And now we are supposed to define uh, these two functions, play song as well as that stop song. And we are supposed to define these functions as some private functions and out of that public function. Let us define this function as private function and the name of that function is play song. And we just need to define that the event is mouse event. Now, along with the play method of the sound object, we are supposed to push this onto the channel just by assigning it to the channel object. My channel object is that my channel, my channel is equals to my song that play will help us to push the loaded song into the channel. Now let us define the another function which is that stop song. Let us just define that function as in stop song and then we are supposed to say channel dot stop. We are just, uh, we need to communicate with that only the channel to control that song, the song which is loaded into that sound object. Let us test it now. Oh, it is started the moment when I click on the play button. Right. It is stopped and I am playing again. Oh my god. It is playing again and again. It is playing again and again whenever I click on the play button. It is not supposed to play that multiple times when I click on the play button. So to stop that, we are supposed to uh, go with a variable which is boolean. I am just declaring that one variable here it has in pp. pp is pause and play. And type of that variable is supposed to be boolean. And initial value of this boolean variable is that true. Let us write the condition inside the play song function. If my variable value is equal to true, then it is supposed to start the song. And then immediately let us make that variable values in false so that it is not possible for us to get that multiple times. And we are supposed to change the variable value back to true when I click on the stop button. Otherwise that it is not possible for us to play after clicking on the stop button. Let us test it now. All right, it is working. Clicking multiple times. Though we click multiple times at the play button, that is not starting again and again. It is playing only once and which is continuing. That's how we can control using this Boolean variable. And now, we just need to add one event listener to the sound object to load or to display the total duration of the song. As soon as it loads at the mp3 file into the memory that it is supposed to show the total duration of the song. So for that we can use that event.complete 
and we are supposed to apply this event to the sound object itself. And here that my function name for that complete event is that uncomplete. Let us define this function out of that my public function as an, uh, a private function that we are supposed to define this uncomplete function. Inside this complete function, I can I can display I can display the duration with the help of this function, and let us define that uh, text object name as duration dot txt equal to string of sound object name dot length will help us to get the total duration. And here both the objects are having both the text objects are having that same name. Let us uh, change uh, the names. One is the duration, and second one is the position. Save it and test it now. Uh, we could see the total uh, duration in milliseconds. As soon as the sound object loads, that will be able to see the duration. But the duration is in milliseconds. Now, let us try to convert this milli uh, total milliseconds into that second sign minutes format which is supposed to be uh, uh, something like regular time format let us define that couple of variables to convert this into a uh, time format so i'm just defining that one variable as in seconds and we're supposed to use modular function to restart that number after 59 after 59 i'm just assigning that total uh, length to that seconds and I'm, I'm using that modular function here with 60. And then let us use that minutes variable. And we're supposed to divide this by 60. And, and we are using even floor function to avoid the decimal points here. We don't want to uh, show the decimal point. We want to show that only the integer. So that is why we are using that floor function uh, from math class. Let us say that uh, total length mod of 3600 by 60 will help us to convert this into minutes. And let's replace the total length from the duration txt. So we are supposed to display from uh, minutes and seconds. So let us add that minutes plus and colon as in spring and then let's take another variable name which is seconds. Let's save the file and we need to test it now. Which will be displayed the total duration in minutes and seconds. Earlier that was showing the total in milliseconds now that we could see clearly the value in minutes and seconds. Let us write a simple condition here to display that time or duration in 0000, 0, 0, 0 format. Now it was showing that only the one digit if it is less than 10. So we, we, we just want to show that digit along with the zero if it is less than 10. So we can we can check out the length of the digit and then we can add zero if necessary. So that is what we are doing here. String of seconds that length is less than two. We are just adding that zero to it, or else it will be displayed directly. And let's apply the same logic to that minutes even, so that it is possible for us to see that the total duration format in zero 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 zero. So minutes that length is less than two. That we are supposed to add that zero to it, or else that we will display that minutes directly without checking the condition. Let's save the file and test it now. We are supposed to see that format in 0000, 0, 0, 0. that we could see here earlier there was no 0 before 2. Now that we could see 2 along with the 0. So this is how that it is possible for us to show that uh, uh, proper file, uh, file format. Now, let us add one event to the uh, stage, which is enter frame, and which I am going to use this event for update the position of the song. When I click play button, when I click play button, that 
uh, the the position of the song will be increased that we we can read the position value from the channel again so since it is supposed to be continuous update that we are supposed to take enter frame event which is going to help us to update that value continuously so i just created that function update all which is going to be uh, uh, continuous let us take that channel position and then we are uh, trying to display that in another text object which is position txt let us test it now we could see that default position is in zero there so we just need to add a simple condition inside it now because it is not supposed to be displayed if that my channel is not loaded then we can write a simple condition there as in that my channel is not equal to null then we can uh, ask that uh, script to display that my position of the song there let's check the preview now test it and play we could see that position update on the screen the moment when you click on the play button let us copy the previous script that which is going to help us to convert the total milliseconds into the seconds and minutes from the total duration so i'm just copied into the enter frame function and we just need to update that you know the function with the different keywords because uh, we were using that length as the total milliseconds for uh, time format but here in this that we are supposed to take in the place of length we are supposed to uh, take you know the position let us take the position and just replace that length with the position so that it will help us to convert that the total current uh, position milliseconds into that seconds and minutes everything is the same we just need to update uh, the position let us remove that duration that txt because duration is part of that another function that position txt text object is the part of uh, enter function let us play it now all right here it is giving you that milliseconds and uh, seconds milliseconds are rounding it for 59 and seconds are getting it for 59 but we are supposed to take that milliseconds into seconds and then seconds are supposed to be rounded for 59 so in the place of that position we are supposed to take that position by 1000 then we are supposed to calculate with that modular function because the position will be in milliseconds we are supposed to start converting that from seconds we just need to divide with 1000 perfect now we could see that proper seconds now we'll be able to see the proper seconds update on the position same thing that we are supposed to update it from even duration also we were just taken the total length uh, with modular we are not supposed to take that length as it is let us convert that length into milliseconds and then we are supposed to apply that modular function to get it uh, in minutes and seconds let us divide that into 1000 even for uh, even for the other function so now we get a different duration now that earlier it was showing the 2 minutes now 
it will different uh, it will be different let us save the file and test it now you could see that updated uh, duration as in 3 minutes 21 seconds all right let us come back to the code now let us try to add the pass method so because with the help of uh, we don't have the pass method by default we just need to use the channel position and duration to create that pass button especially that position will help us to find the current position and then we can freeze that current position and with the help of that stop we can stop the song and then later that when we start the song we are supposed to use this freezed position to start that song from that particular point that's how that we can create a pass button so i've just applied that event to the pass button pass song btn and my function name is that pass song so to freeze that position when we click on the pass button we require that one variable and i've declared that one variable as in pos and i'm trying to freeze the position when I click on the pass but so PO is equal to my channel that position and immediately that we are supposed to stop the song from the channel and then we need to change the PP variable value also to true so that we can click play after clicking on the pass if PP value is changed and let us update that my song dot play to play from that pos variable and then let us test it now click and play playing from the scratch let's click on pass and I could I could pass that my song on 13th second I stopped at 21 click and play when I say stop and play playing from the pre previous pass point when we click on stop button that position is supposed to uh, uh, go back to that zero. Let us update that variable value on stop song function. Pivo is equal to zero and test it now. pass is working I just clicked on stop when I click on play button starting from scratch again now it is working perfect let's stop Now, we just want to display the song name and the dynamic text field called song title txt and we just need to take that song title from the same songs array and we can use that same song index as in variable to read that value from songs array let us test it now we could see that song title on the album title let's adjust that font uh, settings here to display the total song name
let's save and test it now all right perfect let's check the uh, previous and next button names so that we can use them to create that uh, next and previous button functions they are pre song btn and next song btn we just need to add regular mouse events to these two buttons and uh, the pre song btn function is that pre song and let us even uh, define another event listener to that next song dot add event listener and let's take that as usual mouse event and we just need to define the function name and the function name of that next uh, next song btn is that next song now we need to define these two functions the pre song as well as that next song let us define each function as private function private function next to song the event is mouse event right we just need to define the function keyword also there now when it comes to the next song we just need to increase the index value first because to read that the next song from the array and let us include a small condition here because the, this is not supposed to work after uh, the last song from the array we just need to write the small condition here just to check the length of the songs array the condition would be that song index is less than song start length minus 1 because index starts from 0 so that's that's where that we are supposed to take that length minus 1 as a condition and inside that if condition the first step is that increasing that my song index variable and now next to it that we are supposed to stop the current uh, song whatever we have in channel that my channel dot stop and now we need to take that uh, load method of the song to load that fresh song let us copy it from public so public uh, function and let us uh, paste it next to the channel dot stop and we are supposed to load the next song into it so always better before loading that song into that my song Uh, we are supposed to recreate that sound object because since we will be able to load that multiple uh, songs into that sound object it is already uh, always better to define that it as a new object so that it will be replaced just by creating a new sound object with the same instance name and then we can apply that load function and then we need to start the channel just by saying that my song dot play and of course we are supposed to include that another condition there because that next button is supposed to work after cl clicking on the play button before clicking on the play button that it is not supposed to work so that is what uh, we just included that condition there which is that my channel is not equal to null so why is versa let us uh, create that previous song function and we just need to take that same code the code which is part of uh, next song only the thing is that we are supposed to update the uh, the condition there if it is songs index less than song start length is part of that next song but previous song is supposed to be that index greater than 0 and then we are supposed to decrease that uh, the variable value here let us test it now
all right we'll be able to see that next song when you click on the next button let us test it again stop so we'll be able to load the next song when you click on the next button but it is not changing the title let us update the title also we just need to define that dynamic text object name there dot text equal to we just we can use that same array which we are using it uh, to load the next song which is supposed to be that songs array just dot text equal to songs of songs index and we are supposed to take that same uh, uh, same line in even previous song also let us save and test it now position is working and next song is also working next next so we are able to load that song till last song which is that supposed to be which is which is fifth song now let us check with the previous song button so we'll be load we'll be able to load the previous songs also step by step just by clicking on the previous button everything is working proper but total duration is not changing when i move on to that next song let us recall that same event dot complete from next song function as well as the previous song function that's all it automatically uh, uh, it updates the duration whenever you load the song using these two functions let's paste it in both the functions and uh, test it now we'll be able to see that uh, the fresh duration oh both the songs are having same duration now the third duration is different all right we'll be able to see the different durations for different songs perfect it is updating now now we can create a custom function to make the uh, code common for both the functions we could see that almost six lines of the code is the same in previous function and next function let us make it common i just created that my custom function as select song and i'm copying and pasting that code into this custom function which is select song and i can delete it from both the uh, functions and then i need to call this function from both the functions which are that next song and as well as previous song let's say select song and just uh, place it inside that next song as well as uh, the previous song we are supposed to delete that you know the previous old code and the, in the place of that previous code that we can place the the function name as select song so that it loads the script from the select song whenever i click on the play button as well as the uh, previous button save it and test it whether it is working or not play and let us click on the next we could see the title is getting updated and loading that songs and changing the duration even
it is working for previous as well this is one method to decrease uh, the length of the code and repetition of the code Next button is working even after clicking on the stop button before clicking on the play button. So we just need to write this small condition based on that pause and play variable. Let us go back to the select song function and we just need to write that small fun uh, condition there as in that if pp is equals to false then it is supposed to start pp becomes false when we click on the play button until then that pp value will be true so that it is not possible for us to play the song just by clicking on the next or previous button so once we click on the play button then pp value become false and then it is possible for us to get that next and previous function so let us test it now So once we click on the stop button that it is not possible for us to see the next and previous functions. Once you click on the play then only it is possible for us to go with next song and previous song. We will be able to load the next songs. Now we just need to go with the seek bar which I have already imported. We just need to find out the names of the scrubber and the seek bar. Let's align it proper because the registration point is very important for scrubber and the scrubber instance name is that SBRMC here. And the instance name of that SIGBAR is SIGBAR MC. Now, to show that seek bar progress, we just need to take that one rectangle top of uh, the seek bar layer and then we will mask it. Because since my the progress bar is having that gradient, that it is not possible for us to scale it directly based on the position of the song. So it is always better to take that one rectangle top of this pro progress bar and then we can mask it and then we can scale this mask rectangle. It shows that as if that the gradient bar is getting increased. The rectangle which I'm using it for mask is rect MC, which is part of that sigbar MC. Let us mask it now between these two layers, progress bar as well as that rectangle. Now let's go back to the main stage and save the file. And we have the instance name of that uh, symbol as sigbar MC. And let us go back to the base class. Now we just need to update the position. But before that, we need to define the default values of the seek bar and scrubber position. So my scrubber X position is supposed to be zero by default because it is sup supposed to start from the beginning. So initial X position of the scrubber is zero here. And then we need to set the 
rectangle width to 0 even. Let us say that sig bar mc dot rect mc dot scale x equal to 0. So that it is not possible for us to see that progress bar the, by default and the position of that scrubber is 0. Completely left on the sig bar. Now let us go back to that update function which is part of that enter frame which will help us to execute it continuously. And now we need to update that exposition of the scrubber and, and we need to increase the width of that rectangle which is inside that sig bar mc which we used for uh, navigation sorry progress bar uh, uh, masking. Now rect mc dot width is equals to channel dot position by uh, total length of the song and we are supposed to multiply with that uh, total width because it is supposed to increase based on the position that it is supposed to be rounded to the total width of that my rectangle. So to find out that rectangle width, uh, here I am declaring that one variable, so rect width equal to number and inside that public function, we are just uh, supposed to read the width of the rectangle which is inside that my sig bar. Let us say that rect width is equals to sig bar mc dot rect mc dot width. Before making it, uh, uh, before making that rectangle width is in zero, that we are supposed to know the original width of that rectangle, which is, uh, which will be stored in that rect width variable. Now let us come back to the function, saying that uh, position into rect width by length. This works as in that current by total into uh, the round value. Let us save it now, and just let us. Uh, add the x position also so that it gets updated as in when, when I play the song. Based on the position that x position of the scrubber is supposed to get updated. So sig bar mc dot uh, scrubber dot x equal to let us take the same formula which will uh, which is going to help us to update that even x position of the scrubber. Let us save this and let us go back to that uh, control and click on test to set, check the preview. And now click play button. Now the scrubber starts moving towards that right side and progress bar also. Seek bar works for even next song, previous song also because we created a seek bar based on the so sound object. So it works for all the songs. It is not based on the song, it is based out of the sound class. So it works for all the songs. Whenever you, you load previous song and next song, it works perfect for all the loaded songs. And now just uh, uh, creating that one, one more variable which is that scrubber. SBR is my variable boolean variable which is supposed to be false by default because I just want to apply a function to the scrubber uh, uh, which is supposed to be that whenever I drag and drop that scrubber and the seek bar that song position also should get updated. So to drag and drop that scrubber I am supposed to have that one variable because since that my scrubber position is getting updated continuously that it is not possible for us to drag the scrubber uh, while playing the song. So to control that I need a variable. I just defined it as an SBR and default value of SBR is false. When SBR is false that it is supposed to get updated uh, based on the position of the song. But when SBR becomes true that it is supposed to allow me to drag that on the seek bar. And, and we are also supposed to control the width of that rectangle along with the scrubber's position. So, so the seek bar progress, uh, uh, progress bar which is part of that seek bar is uh, uh, getting updated based on the position and the scrubber position. 
channel position as well as the scrubber position. Now that navigation, uh, uh, sorry, progress bar width also should get updated when I drag the scrubber towards that right side. That's where I, I mentioned there a simple if condition inside that enter frame. And now we are supposed to apply that drag and drop method to that uh, scrubber. So to draw, to drag on the seek bar. So I, I, I just took that one down uh, event to, to start moving that my scrubber. And another function which is that up, another function for up event. And let us define that my function as start move, which was assigned to that mouse down event. Let us define it as in private function and my function name is that stop move, start move and let us define that event as a mouse event inside this that we are supposed to apply that start drag to that scrubber, scrubber which is part of C bar. And we are supposed to apply another function also, we are supposed to define that another function also which is that uh, supposed to be stop move which was assigned to that mouse of function. Let's get inside the first function which is start move. We just need to write the condition there because it should allow us to drag when my channel is loaded. Before loading the channel that it is not supposed to work. As usual, let us write the condition if channel is not equal to null, then let us apply that method called start drag. Let us say, uh, 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 let us take that same condition even for uh, the other function which is stop move because stop move and start move both both are supposed to work when my channel is active. My, when my channel is not loaded, I don't want to add any other uh, uh, the methods to this object. Let us say when my channel is not equal to null and when I start dragging that scrubber, SBR, was supposed, uh, SBR should become the true. And when I leave the uh, uh, scrubber, the SBR should become false. And later SBR that we are supposed to add that start drag and stop drag to that same object which is scrubber. Let us say that e dot target will, will help us to find out the target object of the start drag method. Let us say that e dot target dot start drag. And false mouse lock is supposed to be false. It should allow me to drag from anywhere on the object. And we are supposed to define that boundaries and my boundary uh, uh, rectangle instance name is that my rect. I am going to define that my rect as a rectangle now. Let us go back to the top initialization area and we just need to define that one rectangle object here and the instance name of that rectangle is my rect. So my rect is a uh, uh, rectangle and let us define the values inside that public function. Let us say that my rect is equals to new rectangle. And we are supposed to define that four parameters here. One is that x and y and then width and height, which is going to help us to create that boundaries for start drag. Let us say that, let me start from that 0, 0 and width of that rectangle is supposed to be equal to that my rectangle width, which is inside that uh, seek bar, which I use for masking. And then height of the rectangle is supposed to be 0 again. And let us uh, take that mouse down function and let us add it inside that start move because it is supposed to be active the moment when I say down until then that mouse up is not required. And then let us go back to the stop move and the moment when I realize it, when I, the moment when I release the scrubber, it is supposed to uh, uh, stop the drag. Let us apply that uh, stop drag function to the uh, scrubber when I release the cursor. And of course, we need to find out the position when I release the scrubber because from there uh, uh, we want to continue that song. So to, to continue uh, the song from that particular point, we need to find out the position of the song based on that scrubber's x position. So that is a uh, percent uh, possible from this uh, formula which I am going to define now pose equal to which is uh, a variable 
stores that you know the current position pose equal to seek bar dot uh, scrubber dot x into length by total width of the rectangle which will help you to find out that position of the song based out of that x position of the scrubber and immediately we are supposed to stop the song which is part of that my channel now and again we are supposed to assign that uh, my song dot play to that my song my channel with uh, new position let's say save and let's test it now let us click on play and we need to drag this scrubber now it should work drag and drop perfect it is working now so wherever i drop that uh, the song is getting started from there click on next it should work for the next song also it is working perfect the rubber position is updating as well as that navigation sorry progress bar uh, scaling is also working there along with the scrubber position so progress bar is also getting scaled along with the scrubber position now we just need to work on the volume sliders and panning slider let us name the volume slider as vvl slider mc and then let us name uh, the panning slider as in pan slider mc let's get inside that volume slider because we just need to know that uh, knob name and then as usual same logic as we mask the progress bar inside that seek bar we are supposed to mask the same progress bar inside that volume slider also because it is not possible for us to scale the progress bar by default so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to create a rectangle top of the progress bar equal to the width of progress bar and i'm supposed to convert this into a symbol and it has apply that instance name because this is the object that which i am going to scale based out of a volume norm volume norm let us convert this into a symbol and let us apply that instance name as vvl rect mc and let us lock it now and mask it so we could see that complete uh, the progress bar now we just need to set the width of that uh, rect rectangle which is inside uh, the volume slider let's go back to the code again as usual that we are supposed to apply mouse down and mouse up events to the knob the knob which is inside that volume slider so we are just adding uh, the event listener mouse down to the knob mc which is part of the uh, volume slider and function is wall start move as usual that we are supposed to find out the total width of the rectangle which is inside the volume slider i just declared a variable vvl rect and we are supposed to take the width of that vvl rect so it is supposed to be part of that public function and we are supposed to create that one rectangle also to define that start drag method so to to find out the total rectangle width is volume or rect width and the rectangle variable name is that vvl rect vvl rect which will help us to control this dot drag method and vvl rect width is a variable that which will help us to find out the total width of the rectangle which is inside that volume slider so rect width is equals to volume slider dot rectmc dot width which will help us to find out that 
uh, in uh, a total width of that rectangle which is inside that uh, volume slider and we are supposed to initialize that rectangle object to control the start drag method of the knob which is inside that volume slider so we will rect equal to new rectangle i just wanted to start from the 0 comma 0 and width is supposed to be equal to the three world rect width and vertically that is supposed to be zero because i don't want to move it in vertical would like to move only in horizontal that is the reason why that i could uh, when you could see that uh, the the width there is no height and let us define the function for uh, start drag which is supposed to be that we will start move and inside this function that we are going to add the method called start drag for this object the object is knob mc which is part of uh, uh, volume slider let's get inside this function let us say that i would say uh, e dot target instead of writing that complete name i can say that e dot target that start drag and as usual that let us take a mouse lock or lock center as in false and then rectangle boundary uh, rectangle name is that we will rect which we uh, just now we we were uh, you know defined there in the top and let us say here we are supposed to add the another event listener we were just initiated that mouse down there for uh, start drag we are supposed to add another event listener for mouse up uh, for stop drag let us go to this uh, 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 now we see that add event listener mouse up and then we will stop move which is supposed to be that uh, start move function because the moment when i click on that uh, uh, the, the knob then the mouse up is supposed to be initiated so that is the reason why that i am taking this event inside that start move function let's define that uh, another function stop move for knob uh, start, uh, stop drag method let's get inside the function then we are supposed to uh, define that same stop drag in the target or uh, that stop drag save it and test it now oh beautiful we'll be able to move that my knob on the limited range so now let us take the knob mc which is uh, a, a part of uh, the volume slider and then we need to add another event listener uh, uh, for enter frame because the enter frame is supposed to be initiated the moment when i hold the knob mc and then the moment when i say release that is supposed to be uh, uh, stopped the enter frame is supposed to be removed so because I, I i just wanted to uh, scale that progress bar which is part of that you know the volume slider which can be done with enter frame event because uh, it should keep scaling the moment when i drag uh, the knob of slider volume slider so let us define the function of enter frame which is update value and inside that update value function i said we just need to scale the uh, rectangle width there so volume slider dot we will rect mc that width is equals to x position of the knob that we can assign that x position volume slider mc dot knob mc dot x so that the rectangle will be scaled along with the knob and the initial uh, 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 width of that rectangle is supposed to be declared inside that public function let us go back to that uh, public function and then we need to make the uh, initial width of that rectangle is supposed to be zero look at that so now we is moving along with the knob that we will be able to scale that rectangle also the rectangle which is helping us to mask the progress bar 
So it looks as if that my progress bar, bar is getting scaled there. And let us define that now one tra sound transform uh, object. The sound transform uh, uh, is a class that which is going to help us to create that sound transform object. And the sound transform object instance name in our file is st. The instance name of that sound transform object is st. So which is going to help us to control that pan as well as that volume. So we are going to control the volume from a sound transform object which is st. Let us go back to the uh, same enter frame function which is supposed to be that update uh, volume. The enter frame which was assigned to that knob mc and inside this update volume function we just need to write small condition uh, uh, as we discussed in the uh, uh, initial uh, time uh, because uh, the volume is supposed to be active and it, it should work only that when I load the channel. So if channel is empty that it is not supposed to be applicable. So I am just writing the same condition here. If my channel is not equal to null then it is supposed to work. My condition is channel is not equal to null. And then st dot volume. So we have the two properties uh, with a sound transform class. One is that volume as well as uh, the, the pan. Volume is equals to target uh, dot x by the total width. And let us test it now. Beautiful, it is working. I will be able to increase and decrease that volume with volume slider. So it works for all the songs, not only for one song. Look at that. Because we created this based out of that channel. So this works for all. And now we just need to take that same and we are supposed to set the initial value also. To set that initial value of the song that we are supposed to take the the x position of the knob and the total will help us to calculate that value between that 0 to 1 and then we can assign that value to that sound transform value. So I'm just changing that knob position to change the default value. There we are not supposed to take the data target since it is part of the public function we are supposed to define that knob mc instance name slider mc dot knob mc dot x will help us to find out that x position of the knob. So current by total will help you to get that range of uh, 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 you know values 0 to 1. Let's test it now. So look at that the default is not 0 now it is somewhere around 75 percent. It is working for all the sounds, but the default rectangle width is not getting changed. When I drag the slider, then only it is updating the width of that rectangle. So we are supposed to update that rectangle width by default also. Even. So let's take the statement, copy the statement from update value function and let us go back to the public function and next to that uh, width. Alright, we can replace that width, it was 0 earlier, now that I am just uh, replacing based upon the knob x position. We could see that default width of the rectangle.
let's pause the song and then increase the volume and then play decrease it after pause and play so it is not working when we pause it and decrease the volume and then play it it is not applying that the moment when you uh, drag the slider then only it is updating the volume so what we can do is that we can take uh, the code as common let's create our own function and then we can call that particular function wherever we require let us create that my custom function as public sorry private function and then volume let's define the function name as set volume pan because i would like to use this function for both the properties volume and pan and let's copy that code which was part of that update volume and we are supposed to uh, include it in set volume pan now we just need to call this custom function wherever we require because a uh, different areas that we are supposed to call this function so instead of copying that code everywhere i just created that my custom function and my custom function name is that volume sorry set volume pan and we are uh, ju we, we just need to call that function on all the buttons so play sir the moment when i click on play uh, then also that i would like to initiate the volume and then of course e target is supposed to be changed with uh, volume slider dot knob mc because we are not having the script inside that button event so since we have created our own function that always better to go with the object name and let us include it in next button as well as that uh, previous button because it is supposed to update the moment when i click on the next button also and let's go back to start stop move it means that uh, uh, when we move the scrubber so it is also supposed to get that updated volume let's say play the song and move it look at that it is working now now we just need to work with we are done with that volume slider let us start working with the pan pan slider but pan slider is not supposed to start from the left it is supposed to start from the center from center towards that left and right because we'll be having that left and right channels the values of that left and right channels are 0 to 100 0 to minus 100 and in scripting that we'll be having values from 0 to 1 and 0 to minus 1 that is why that i've taken that knob position by default as in center and we just need to move from there towards that left and right and as usual that i am applying you know mouse down even to the pan slider just to initiate that start drag let us write the function for uh, start drag of the pan slider pan knob of the pan slider so inside that pan start move that we are supposed to apply that start drag function to the knob which is part of that pan slider and of course we are supposed to define that uh, one rectangle boundaries rectangle for uh, start drag method of pan slider also so pan knob mc dot start drag now that we are supposed to define the variable so that must be the pan rect we are supposed to define that rectangle for the slider and of course that we require that you know the width of the rectangle also here 
we are not going to use this uh, uh, pan rect uh, width here but let us say uh, let's see Let, let's check that now but we just required uh, one rectangle for uh, pan slider So pan rect is equals to new rectangle. So we just need to uh, define the variable for pan rectangle. So where pan rect and the type of that pan rect is supposed to be that rectangle. So initialization. We just need to uh, uh, define the values here. Pan rect is equals to new rectangle and should start from 0, 0. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the x position is supposed to be that minus 70 and y position is supposed to be 0 and width is as usual that pan rect width comma 0 because it should move only in horizontal not in vertical. So, and then the, uh, the, the x position maximum x position is supposed to be 0 and uh, left towards that left is supposed to be uh, a minus 70. Maximum is not 0. Maximum is that rect width and minimum is supposed to be that minus 70. Let us see. Pan rect width is equals to because we, we use that variable in rectangle then we are supposed to initialize that variable value there. Pan rect width is equals to the rectangle which is inside the pan slider which is pan rect mc. Let us take the pan rectangle to define inside that start rect. Lock center is supposed to be false and then rectangle name is pan rect which is going to help us to define that boundaries for start drag method of hand slider. Now same as usual that uh, we are supposed to have that you know the mouse up function and the uh, enter frame function. So mouse up uh, uh, function is volume slider. Uh, I am just taking it from that volume slide volume uh, you know function. Let us copy both the events from uh, volume slider and then we will paste it in uh, pan, uh, pan slider. And we just need to update that uh, movie, uh, movie clip object names. So pan slider in, in the place of that volume slider we are supposed to replace with a pan slider and then inside that knob name is also very important. Uh, do not forget to change the knob name. So val, uh, uh, volume knob mc uh, to pan knob mc. And we have uh, pan stop move function uh, for mouse up and then enter frame uh, function would be remain same which we used for update volume. Update volume is the same function for uh, both the enter frame events. Uh, one enter frame from volume slider, another enter frame from pan slider and then we are supposed to declare that another function for pan start move. So, which is going to help us to stop the drag and as I told you that you are supposed to change that knob name inside that start uh, drag and stop drag which is very very important. Since we copied from the different function that there is a chance to miss that names. So be careful. Let us save and then let us go back to the test. Now we will be able to see that moving of the knob towards that left and right from center. So we don't require that uh, setting of width of the rectangle here. So because we are not going to have that progress bar inside that the pan rect inside that pan slider. All right. Let us go back to that set value pan uh, function, which was our custom function. 
we were uh, setting only that volume uh, property from sound transform we are also supposed to set the pan property from sound transform so i'm just updating that pan value of sound transform property uh, uh, using that pan slider and knob x position so just say slider mc dot pa, uh, nav x by total pan rect width because current by total will help you to get the same but we just need to take here current by total by 2 here because we just want to have that values from 0 to minus 72 0 to plus 72 so total width is supposed to be divided into 2 and we need to start from center oh we'll be able to play this song from left speaker and right speaker when we move the pan knob audio is traveling from one speaker to the another speaker left is minus one right is plus one we can see that perfectly audio is traveling from one speaker to the another speaker when i move the knob of the pan slider Now we just need to have uh, one loader object because we will be able to load the songs, we will be able to see the titles, we will be able to see that album and we are uh, uh, able to control that volume and panning uh, of the audio and then we will be able to create uh, 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 you know the uh, seek bar and we could play that song from wherever we want that using scrubber. But when we load the song that it is supposed to display the image which is related to that song and I've just uh, saved all the images in images folder. So to load that images dynamically or from external folder that we are supposed to define that one object called loader, which is going to help us to load that JPEG files as well as the PNG files. I have all the files in PNG format and I've created that loader object and the instance name of that my loader object is my loader. And I'm just using that add child method to, to add it to the display list. And then I can set that my loader x and y position to place exactly that wherever I require inside that my design. So let us say that my loader dot x equal to and then my, do, my loader dot y equal to. So which will help us to place that my loader object on the exact place where I wherever I require according to that my UI design of the mp3 player. So x and y values are declared here and let us define that uh, the, the, the load method. To load that image and let us go back to that same uh, uh, public function and next to that song load we are supposed to load that uh, the, the my loader also the same method load method will help us to load that image from the external folder into the loader object that which is my loader here in this case so my loader dot load equal to new url request and then we are supposed to define that path very very important before uh, the song sorry before the image name that we are supposed to define that images folder path and later of uh, later after the name of the image we are supposed to define that extension also that is also important now in between that you can take the name of the song from the array because we have that song names as well as that uh, the image names are same so we can use that same songs array to load that images into the loader J let us copy this load uh, statement and we are supposed to include it in uh, next song and previous song functions also because whenever I click on that next that it is supposed to load that next song image and even from previous song image so let us test it now we can see that now play and click on next to see that next uh, song images seek bar is working volume is working Panning is also working. 
let's click on the next button now we'll be able to see that next image and next song title also so it works for all the songs so when i click on the next button it loads the next image and next song and when i click on the previous button it loads the previous song and previous image Here is the final MP3 player. Thank you for watching and have a great day.